hello good morning good afternoon good evening depending on when and where you're watching this video from i'm dr katie your radio huh? there is something for us to learn today of course that's why i'm here if you are a mother you have a teenager in your house you are a father you have a teenager in your house oh yeah let's get out here there is something for us to learn or you are a guardian of a teenager there is something for us to learn today we'll be talking about the health issues of a teenager we're not going to talk about the social problems okay well let's go talk about the medical or the health issues of a teenager a teenager is between the ages of 13 and 18. as i tell they are above 18 they are now a youth so the teenager is a transition from childhood into adolescence. the reason why we're here today to talk about the teenager is because there are some situations that are associated with being a teenager. If you have a teenager in your house, you are going to be attested to some of the things that we'll be talking about here. All right, a teenager, as at the time you are getting into a teenager from a childhood or from being a child, there are hormones that are associated with that growth and development. Okay, that is the process or the period of puberty. This period of puberty is brought about by hormonal surges, increase in hormones. If you're a man, the testosterone, the androgens, the male hormone will be more if it's a male child. If it's a female child, the female hormones, the estrogen, the progesterone at this time will be increasing. So the reason why we are gathered here today is to talk about the effect of these hormonal changes on your teenager so that you will know how to help them. A teenager at this time of their life, they are at risk of mood swings because of the effects of this hormone on their system, on their central nervous system. They are at risk of being healthy. When you see your teenager challenging you, when you see your teenager telling you, I'm an adult, leave me alone, stop oppressing me. When you see your teenager standing up to you, and you begin to wonder what is wrong with this boy or what is wrong with this girl. When you see your teenager come becoming, you know, more disobedient, you know, not wanting to live by the rules and regulations. It is not entirely their fault. It is because of the changes that is going on in their body and in their mind, as well as the hormonal effect of these changes, as well as the body effect to these hormonal changes. You see them not listening. You see them not getting to understand what you're trying to let them understand. They want it done in their own way, whichever way. So why am I here today? This is the time as a parent to stand up and help the teenager in your home, the teenager in your life, the teenager you have born, or the teenager you are taking care of. How will you help a teenager during this period? But first, you must identify the problem that a teenager will have. Because of this hormonal effect, some of them will have to be withdrawn. For a woman who is beginning to have breast, you know, a chest, she's beginning to see the chest, the breast growing, and some can be painful, some might not be too painful, and the woman is beginning to menstruate, the discomfort of having to put something in between the legs, you know, to begin to collect the blood during the period of menstruation, can cause some female to be withdrawn, can cause some to begin to uh, be highly irritable, irritated, and not wanting to, to, to socialize or to be outspoken or to mingle with people. At a time, they might want to think that it's a problem, you know, that is why as a parent, you must take a time to educate your, your children in their late childhood, when they are beginning to get into uh, uh, teeth. You are supposed to educate them on the body changes that they are going to have, the need for a woman to have menstruation, their pubic hair that is beginning that will begin to grow at a time. You know, you should talk to your children about it. So that at the time it's coming to them, they will begin to hide. They will see it as strange. They will see it as a problem. Educate the teenagers in your life, parents. Be supportive emotionally. Be supportive. Be caring. It is not their fault. These changes has effects. These changes have effects on the way they reason. On the way on their perception at this time they are healthy at this time they are very adventurous in fact the mom makes them think that I, I think i'm like a daddy now i'm like a mommy you know they want to take or do the things that you think you are doing that is only meant for adults so it is in your responsibility and in your place to cancel them right to guide them right and again this thing too this time when you begin to have them have uh, deep voice, the guys, the boys will begin to have deep voice, they begin to have their male organs developing and growing into the size of adults. If you don't cancel them, they can be 
found in the wrong group. They can misinterpret those changes as being an adult. You know, a young man or a young child who had it smaller and not having it big. A young child who didn't have a breast and not seeing it growing big. You know, they might begin to think, oh, this is what it takes to be an adult. And then want to become adventurous. They want to exploit. If you don't take care of them, this is the time most of them will be deflowered. This is the time most of them will go and deflower people. This is the time they begin to think of what the whatever is coming out of them is being used for. You know, they see these organs becoming big. They begin to wonder what is being used for. They begin to ask questions, you know, in their mind, what is being used for. And they want to explore. They think that having to see it coming means that it's time to use them. No, you must cancel your teenager in the course of puberty. Let them prepare their mind for what to get. Let them know that a time will come that this will happen. And let them know the risk and challenges that they face at that age. That if this kind of thing will happen to you at this age, you will get pregnant. If you allow somebody to touch you, describe what you mean by your touch. Not the touch of touching your clothes. Because I remember while we were growing up, our parents would tell us, if a man touches you, you know, you will get pregnant and when you get pregnant your destiny is ruined you will be able to go to school you will be able to become a doctor that you have desired to become at the time you don't want to sit with a man or a boy in class because you don't want the boy to touch you because you want to fulfill destiny parents there is an extent you go with trying to you know keep some information otherwise the main aim of sharing that information will not be clear you know the child will not understand i know that you cannot still go you you are not to go too deep in the heart or go too raw but you must describe what you mean by a man touching you and you getting pregnant and the risk of getting pregnant as a teenager you must be seen to be discussing this with your teenager to discuss with your boy tell your boy you cannot rape anybody tell your girl don't allow anybody to rape you assess give them sex education so that they don't make mistakes you know why? Because somebody will tell me, better preventing disease. How is this one concerning you? Should I tell you why it concerns you? Early teenage pregnancy will predispose to teenage abortions. And most times, teenage abortions are not safe because they don't confide in their parents. They don't tell uh, any adults. They don't trust. They don't confide in any adult before they can take such, this, or such risk. So some of them will begin to look for drugs that can help them. And before you know it, they are destroying themselves. Some will begin to take drugs that will destroy the entire womb or through the reproductive tract of a woman of a woman and those people too they are the one that will be at risk of septic abortion and the complications that are associated with abortion so it is better to guide them right guiding them right will help them take the right decision will help them know that these are the things they need to do and the things they need not to do as their body is growing and it is better prevented because prevention is better than cure at all times parents of a teenager how many times have you sat down your teenager to discuss sex education to discuss bodily changes as you grow as a teen the need for caution as you grow as a teen because the hormonal surges in them is what is pushing them to do a lot of things this hormonal drive hormonal drive you see a teenager looking through peeping through the window of a girl wants to see trying to look on that pant i've seen it i've heard of a teenager who tried to pay another teenager because he wanted to see breast it was, it was conversing with a teenager in class. I want to give you money. I want to see your breast. You know, he wanted to see. It is this hormonal effect, hormonal surges that is making them want to explore, to see the need or the reason why these things are not coming up in their body. Does it mean that there are some certain things they need to be doing with those things that they are not doing now? If you don't guide them right, they will take the wrong decision. And to make it worse, if you allow the wrong people to not talk to them about those things, they will think that the parents didn't do well. And then they'll begin to do it. I say my parents, uh, they actually heal this from me. This is something I was supposed to be doing as a teen. What am I trying to say? If you don't tell your child that this, these structures that you have there on your chest is for you to nurse your baby when you grow and when you, are, when you boil your children, okay? And you, these are the things you should not allow a man to do with it. You should not allow anybody to touch it. This is the way you will feel if you allow somebody to touch it. It's too early. You know, it is a way of growth. There's a level you will get to that you will not be married. When you are married, you will understand better why God has given you these structures. It's not for you to misuse it now. These are the things that will happen to you when you misuse them. This is the time a teenager will take any child in the home, any female child, a teenage boy will look for a, a child, a female child in the home and begin to exploit things that are bad habits, things that are ahead of. 
okay? They'll begin to do things that when you hear of them, you will weep, you will sorrow. So as a parent, don't allow your teenager get to the extent of trying to find out things by themselves and then make mistakes before you talk to them about the changes that they are undergoing in their body, about emotional swing, about how they become healthy. Tell them how much when I mean healthy, when they become rude, not the health now. Okay, when they become naughty, when they don't want to listen to anybody, let them know that it's not their fault. Show them love. Okay, guide them through with so much love so that they will know that you understand that it's not entirely their fault. Guide them through. And the time will come, they will keep cooperating with you. Confi let them confide in you on whatever it is that they are feeling. Let them let you know. And when they tell you all such things, the way to build, the way to encourage them to begin to trust in you more is to ensure that whatever secret, whatever they tell you in confidence, you take it seriously and you don't use it against them. You don't use it to love them. You don't use it to tease them. You don't tell the other person about it so that the person will not look down on them. So when they are sure that they are trusted, that they can trust you with their information, then they'll begin to tell you more and then they will make mistakes. You must let your son know that he doesn't need to, sleep, to go and abuse a child. Because he's beginning to develop uh, adult sexual characteristics. You must let your son know. He must not rape anyone in the course of his life. Because there are hormonal ch changes or hormonal surges. You must let your son know that the time will come that it will be very difficult to control your, 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 your desire for such things. Because of the hormonal changes. That your ability to be able to control that and put it on that set. All that self-control or caution makes you a perfect gentleman, makes you a man that is respected in the community. You must let them know what it is to have morals. You must let them know what it is to treat a woman well, to treat people well. If you don't teach them, it is after mistakes that you begin to keep quiet. Do you know that teenagers have been seen to even do unhealthy things? Teenagers have been seen to do terrible things to their younger ones because their parents refuse to let them know. It is not that they are that bad. It is just that they were not taught, so they think, let's exploit. Okay, maybe there's a reason God gave us what is coming out in our body, so let's use it. There are people, parents, who failed in communicating with their teenagers, and at the end, their teenager was doing something terrible to their younger ones. Especially when it's a, a, a male child. A male child teenager who felt that he has developed uh, many such characteristics started abusing a younger child in the house who is a sister. Because you didn't tell them, these are the things you cannot do with your sister. These are the things you cannot do with your brother. You didn't tell them. So that they will know and know that it is not right. If you don't tell them, they will assume. And before they know, they have made terrible mistakes. And there are people today who had, I had the opportunity of discussing with an individual who had the time of sleeping with a sister. Who abused, who once had carnal knowledge of a sister. The you know he said, I was just stupid. I didn't know it was wrong. You know? And he said, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to talk about it, doctor. It is one of the events of my life that I regret so much. Do you know I will blame the parent? You kept it. You didn't teach them. You didn't educate them. You didn't tell them about morals. You didn't tell them about things that you can do with your siblings and things you can never do with your siblings. You expected them to know. Nobody know. Nobody will know when you are just born. You are taught to know. And because you are taught to know, you, it is what you are taught that you will know. And over time, you acquire knowledge, either by being taught or by seeing what others are doing or by hearing. Nobody is born with anything. That is why the then philosopher said that the mind was born a tabula rasa. What a tabula rasa means is a plain silate. That was what the mind was. A plain silate. It's whatever you write on it that will be on a plain silate, isn't it? Parents, educate your teenagers. Please, so that they will not make mistakes. Okay, let me guide you through. What are the things that we teach a teenager? One, in the late adult, in the late childhood, meaning that in the beginning of a teen, when a child is just entering the period of being a teenager, a teen, okay? That maybe we are talking about a 10-year-old child, 11-year-old child, okay? This 10, 11, what are the things you will teach your child? One, let them know that a time will come, they will begin to have breasts. They will begin to have hair in their pubic areas, in their private parts. They will begin to have voices being deepened like that of a man. They will have their male organ developing into that of an adult. They will have their structures developing into that of the adult. You will tell them about these things. A woman will begin to have menstruation. You begin to see regular menstruation. 
And what does this mean? It means that your eggs, your ovaries now are not producing eggs and your hormones have reached that level that when you, when a man comes to you and you allow it, you can get pregnant. And you have to be able to teach them or let educate them on teenage pregnancies. That the problem that associated with teenage pregnancy, you don't have a job, you don't have money. How will you take care of your child? How will you send your child to school? Like I'm sending you to school now, I cannot pay your child's school fees because it's not my mother that is paying your own school fees. Are you getting me? I'm the one paying your own school fees because I graduated, I got a job. I haven't gotten a job. I got I got married. I'm burying my children. I'm caring for them, sending them to school. It's not my mother that is caring for you. Is it my mother that is caring for you? The child will say no. So if you get pregnant now, or if you pregnant again now, and they bring you a child, I always care for the child. Will it be me? I will not care for the child. You know what I would do? I would ask you to go and rent your house and take your wife there and care for your children. They'll be scared. How would I rent my house? Say yes, because myself and daddy, for me now, myself and daddy, we are the one paying for this house. We are the one that built this house. Okay, so you have not built your house. You want to start having children. You have not gotten a job. Don't you see that in the morning I go to work and that's who we go to work. Okay, you, you have not gotten a job. You want to go and get a woman pregnant or you want to go and get pregnant. Who will take care of your baby? Then you begin to tell them when you get pregnant, they don't allow people to go to school with pregnancy. Did you see any pregnant girl in your class? Did you see any pregnant student? No. So they will not allow you to go to school with pregnancy, meaning that you will not go to school again. And if you don't go to school, you will not get a good job. And if you don't get a good job, you will be able to take care of your children. You will be able to marry a good man or you will be able to marry a good woman. You will tell them stage by stage of life the problems that they will accompany, the problems that will come their way because if they take careless decisions, and if they take the right decisions, all that they will get. If you go to school and you study your books, okay, if you do very well, you can win scholarship. And if you win scholarship, we will be giving you money. Scholarship will be giving you money. You'll be very rich as a student. And that will encourage you to read even more. And when you get, when you graduate with good grades, when people are looking for a job and pay money to get a job, you will not pay money to get a job. Your name will be on the merit list. And when you get a job, you will get money. And when you want to open a company of your own, you have good support because people will say you have excellent performance. They can trust you. You have good character. You were not a thief at any time. You never did drugs. You never smoked. You know, you must be seen to be teaching your teenager the way to a beautiful life. Don't leave them to error. Don't leave them to try a lock. Don't leave them to garbage in, garbage out. As at the time they will get to learn this by themselves, they must have made several mistakes, silly mistakes that some parents wouldn't even know. You might not even know. There are parents whose children have been involved in one abortion or the other, but you don't know. And as at the time they'll be trusting for children, those mistakes will chase after them. Parents, be deliberate in how you handle your teenager. Because that is the stage of life that is very, very critical. It will determine what you will become in future. How? How will that determine? If you any mistake that is made at that time, we mar a child. I will tell you why. For example, somebody in the university, if she gets pregnant, you can tell her, don't abort it. I'm here. When you deliver, bring the baby to me. And she will still graduate from the university, get a job and be able to take care of that child, isn't it? Somebody who has graduated from the university, has gotten a job, can get pregnant. No matter what the man says or what the woman says about the pregnancy, because they are empowered, they'll be able to take care of that child. But a teenager who gets pregnant or a teenager who impregnates another, it will affect their developmental milestone. It will cut the, If they have not achieved anything in life, it will derail them significantly. Any, any teenager who made a significant mistake that restored and made it right in life got a maximum parental support. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gotten there. Maximum parental support in the sense that they supported this child financially, emotionally, psychologically. Some will even change the environment so that because you can be supportive as a parent and the social, social influence or the environmental forces against the child will still be able to derail the child. What do I mean? People look in the community says, you go away. You that got pregnant in your father's house. Look at this wayward girl. Look at this careless girl. Look at this prostitute. Or look at this drug dealer. Look at this boy. You that is smoking. You that is drinking. You know, even when you have adequate parental support, the people around you can still be bad enough to derail a teenager that has made a mistake. So it is better prevented. Father, mother, when was the last time you sat down with your teenager to teach them about life? Teach them about their body and about the things they will go through in life and how they will not make mistakes 
and the thing that will determine their bright future and how they have to start sowing good seeds now that whatever they sow now will determine where they are going how many times have you taken that time to talk to your teenager we just leave them alone as the breeze is blowing them wherever it takes them the better nobody is born with such things teachers please as part of your teaching of a teenager you must teach them about their own self about their body about the errors that they are likely to make about the mistakes that they are likely to make okay they have social problems too they have peer pressure especially for those ones who parents are not taught well and those ones that are wild who parents are even terrible because there are parents that smoke, that drink, that does a lot of terrible things, that are drug addicts, that beats their wife, that beats their husband, you know, and they must have influenced their teenager. And that teenager will go to school and be in a community of other teenagers that were from a good home. And teenagers whose parents failed to teach the morals and modesty in life. Whose parents failed to inculcate the right knowledge. So this peer pressure will come. Why are you not smoking? Say, ah, you're careless. Oh, you're a weakling. You're not a big boy. My father smokes. I used to buy it for him. Why are you not smoking? Say, ah, my father doesn't smoke. Say, your father is a weak man. And because you didn't tell your child that I don't smoke because I'm a perfect gentleman. Do you know if I was smoking, I would not be given this contract. Nobody would trust me. If I was a drunkard, nobody would trust me to give me this job. You didn't let the child know that the specific characters that you have gotten contributed to your success in life so that your child will look you as a role model as a mentor to begin to look after those things to look like you to do those wonderful things you are doing so that he would he too will get to a target you know reach the desired goal in life you just leave the child alone for those peer pressure to begin to derail them and then somebody comes and say you must smoke your father is to say your father is a weakling you never told your child that you that is not smoking you are better than the person the person that smokes so the child says oh good i want to be better than my dad i don't want to be a weakling like my dad before you know it your child is smoking and before you know it your brace is doing drugs and all sorts of things and you want to blame him you want to say he's a bad son father you're a bad father i'm sorry i don't want to call you a bad father father it's you who failed in taking care of that child it's you who failed in meeting your responsibility. You are supposed to talk to your teenage child about the characters that will sell him for good. When I mean characters, characters that will portray him in the right pictures. Characters that will attract him to his destiny helpers. Characters that will, that will attract him to good health. Not doing drugs. Not abusing drugs. I had the opportunity of traveling out of the shores of this country. You know what shocked me? I saw something in the hands of every young girl, young boy there. You know, you know what it was looking like? You think it's lipstick, it's not lipstick. Even at bus stop, you put them put it in, put it in the bar, they said it's vapor or whatever. I've come in peace. If you think you have something you are benefiting from vape, don't fight me. But I was shocked. Teenagers having those things in their hands. Why? Influence. Environmental influence, peer pressure. Why is it that you cannot do without it? Is it food? What is it that is in it that you must do or that you need to take? It's just peer pressure. They are doing it, you have to do it. It doesn't add anything to you. Just like it doesn't remove anything from you. But if you don't have the good upbringing or somebody talking to you about them, that they are not it, that it's not what you need to be successful in life, they will make the mistake before they know that it's not actually a big deal. You know, they must have been doing a lot. Turn their no lungs to kitchen chimney. Do a lot of all that, all, all that they have to do with drugs before they now know that there was actually nothing there. But you didn't give them the right foundation. You left them alone to be influenced by negative peer pressure. You left them to chance. So if you are here, you are listening to me. A father of a teenager, a mother of a teenager, it's not too late. Go home. Or a guardian of a teenager sit your teenager down let's assume you've been very harsh just apologize for example let's say the teenager is titi okay you say titi i'm sorry i've been too harsh as a father or as a mother i didn't come close enough to understand some of the problems and difficulties you might be going through as a teenager and today i realize my mistake and i want to be able to put it right. I want to be able to correct my paths and make this work. I want to be able to make up, okay, meet up with the necessary demands. I want to be able to meet up my responsibility as a good father, as a good mother. I want to be able to bridge the gap now where I have failed. I want to be able to now help you through. 
Is there anything you want me to do? Don't ask all the questions in one day because you are just starting. And after that, show love. If anything he's doing wrong, you just say it's not your fault, but you have to do it right, okay? It's not your fault. It's the pressure of this age. It's your monarch changes of this age. It's the demand of this age, okay? But just be determined to make it work. Determined to help it right. Some of them will have problems in school, okay? Because of these monarch changes. Some of them will be lazy. Some of them will procrastinate. Some of them, because a lot is happening in their mind, so they don't concentrate in school. So you must let them know that it is not their fault. Ask about how they are doing in school. Ask about, have you done your homework? Have you done your assignment? Do it early so that you won't be anxious of for nothing. Do it early so that you won't be pressed when it is time. And when you are pressed when it is time, that will encourage people to give up. They will just say, I don't want school. I want to, I, I want to play ball. I want to dance. You can, you can play ball after being a graduate. You can dance after being a graduate. You know what that will do? It will help the quality of football that you play. Or it will help the quality of dance that you, you will dance. How? Because nobody will intimidate you. Nobody will call you that college dropout that dances. Everything that you do after being a graduate, it will give, it will add quality to it. All right? So you must be seen to be proactive. You must be seen to be determined to help your teenager succeed. Give them the necessary psychological support. Give them the necessary emotional support. Give them the necessary spiritual support. Pray with your teenager. Teach them the way to grow in the Lord. Because if they fail, it is you that they will blame. Go and take, take, if go and do a research or just ask questions. Ask adults of today the mistakes they made as teenagers. You see what they blame it on? I was just a child. I was naive. Okay? Everybody say I was just a child. I was naive. So whose responsibility is it to help them in that time they were just naive? It's the parents who have seen things, who too were naive at the time. You were naive. There was a time. Don't allow your children to make the same mistakes that you made. That's why you are their parents. Guide them with your own mistakes. Because nobody, I'm very sure nobody talked to you while you were a teenager. That was why you did some of the things you did. I know people that are very good today, that are perfect gentlemen, who at the time, they slept with loved ones. Who at the time, they were almost raping their siblings. Who at the time, they were almost abusing people around them. Okay, but today they are perfect gentlemen. They are there are people who fear God. But that time of their life is a time of challenges, time of hormonal imbalance affecting their, their character, their mood, their behavior. You know, these behavioral changes, if you don't get them through it, they will make terrible mistakes. And they will not begin to say, oh my God. A lot of them will be able to get their life back, but some will not be able to get it back because the mistakes are too early. They will derail them and they will impede on their developmental milestones. You can imagine it takes a father or a mother who is determined to be able to allow a teenager 13 who is pregnant have delivered in the house and send her back to school and keep the child so we just stop no more school they will take you to somewhere the good ones will still ask you to go and learn trade or that's just leave you in the house you wash the pots you sweep the house you have become the house help for the family where others are going to school you, the teenager that made mistake, you are the scapegoat for every other person that is not making mistake. And that child will grow up to lament, you know, when he's getting into adult. He'll begin to say, oh, I was just a child. My parents didn't help me enough, okay? And before you know it, baby mama everywhere. Baby mama, bury baby mama. Baby mama, bury another baby mama. You see a young woman at 18 having four children from four different fathers. It's not it. I blame you, parents. Let's educate our teenagers. And when you educate them in the late childhood and early teenage, even if some of them will still do what they want to do, but at least you'll be satisfied that you tried. And do you know a praying mother, a dedicated and a, a, a mother that is determined to see you prosper as a child, she will not leave you alone. No matter what you think you will do to win all life efforts, she will not let you be. I remember I listened to one celebrity when he was talking that what he is today, his mother made him. The mother changed him from three schools. First, he saw his company. They were terrible. He said, if I allow you with this company, you will go to jail at 15. She removed him from there, separated him. I saw another mother relocating out of town because she felt that the friends, the, the teenage, his own teenager was keeping they were terrible friends that they would lure him to nowhere but destruction. And since the teenager was not tending, was not understanding 
was not wanting to listen to mommy, was not wanting to listen to daddy. His own was that daddy and mommy, they are too, they are too possessive. They are too instructive. They are not letting me have my life. They are not letting me have fun. Are they the only parents of a teenager? Look at my classmate. Look at my friend who is 13. He's smoking, he's drinking, has a girlfriend, sleeps out of the house, goes to club. Mommy, daddy, they are not allowing me. They see you as an enemy at that time. They won't know you are doing them good. But for parents that are determined to make it work, some relocated because of that child without letting the child know, trying as much as possible to separate that child from bad influence. Until the child is old enough to appreciate these good deeds that daddy and mommy have invested. The sacrifices they made just to ensure he gets his right. Do you know when your teenager gets his right? It's you that will be proud. Did you want to go see your teenager to visit in the prison as a good mother? You say I'm a good mother since he has been in the prison. I visit him every month. That does not make you a good mother or a good father. What makes you a good mother or a good father is the fact that you help the child avoid those things that will put him in prison. In the early age, in the early part of his life, and that he cannot, if he doesn't go to prison at that age, he's able to know what is good and what is bad. He wouldn't go to prison even the older age, even when he becomes an adult, because he has been able to acquire enough to discern what is good from what is bad. I know of another parent who, because of his teenager, quit. You know, had to leave a job. Why? Because that job was supporting. He was working in a brewery. Where there were a lot of drinks and all that he didn't know how to tell a child do not drink it's going to put you at risk of this aspect of the other thing because the job as a child was growing up to know that daddy was working in a brewery the child would take it that it is good that's why daddy is there i see parents who sacrificed his job because he wanted to be a role model a good example for the child be deliberate in raising your teenage be deliberate in raising your teenager be deliberate in imparting knowledge that will help your teenager make the right decision. Be deliberate to sacrifice for the health, for the life, for the well-being of your teenager. Because at that time, they are still like the fish that is fresh that you need to dry. And if at that time that is still fresh, you can bend it in whatever direction you want to, when you are determined to do it. But when it is not dry, when you want to bend, it will break. So don't wait until when they become a youth at 19 or 20. They are sleeping out. They are doing drugs. And if then you want to change them, you can't change anybody at that time. Start now. In late our childhood and early teen. So that you'll be able to impact the right knowledge that will help the child make the right decision. And what else? You must be seen to raise the child in the path of the Lord. According to your faith. There is a religion that is very good at that. You know. When you see their children, they will recite all that they have to recite concerning their religion. Raise your child early. Bring the child up in your faith. So that when the child grows, he will not begin to fight you. I won't do it. I won't go this way. I won't go the other way. Raise the child. Raise your child in the Lord. So that when the child grows, the child will not depart from it. Parents. And when you raise the child in the morals of God, it will be easier for you to tell the child not to do drugs. In fact, when you let the child grow with the love of the Lord, with the love for the word of God, with the love for the things of the Lord, you have little or nothing to tell the child in living rights. You don't even need to tell the child, don't drink. When you are saying don't drink, the child will educate you more. I say, yes, daddy, you don't need to drink. And this what and what it will do to you. You don't need to smoke. The child will be the one educating you. And for Christians, for your children that will go to church, allow them to join the teenage session if they are teenagers. If they are children, allow them to join the children. Allow them, if they are youth, allow them to join the youth. Because at these various classes, they are taught age-specific lectures. Don't come and keep them in adult class, you know, in the main church, in the main auditorium, because you want them by your side. In the main auditorium, they are teaching them how to, how to, how to fight battles, how to fight to win. To, to be able to heal from any infirmity, outside the knowledge of you will have to keep your faith in God so that at the end you are going to have the desired reward of going to heaven, of meeting the Lord when he calls and all that. Outside that, you know, they'll be teaching you how to get your job, how to get to succeed in job and all that. But in these other classes, they teach them eight specific lectures. So don't deprive your children from such a religious gathering that is age specific and for churches for spiritual gathering for spiritual environment please design unit don't just have a general house for everybody design unit for each class the children church 
the teenage church, the youth church, so that there will be teachers that will teach them eight specific lessons, eight specific lectures, understand the changes that is going on in their body and the life at that time, and give them spiritual messages that tend to fit them at that time. So the spiritual teachers, the home teachers, and the school teachers, when we all put our hands together and start early enough, we'll be able to give birth to a teenage that is a role, a teenager that is a role model that is worthy of emulation, that is worthy of trust and love. And at the end, we will have a better society. Like when I had the lecture, when I was talking about uh, giving a lecture on rape, you know, I talked about the role the society will play, the mother will play, the father will play, the teachers will play. Everybody had a role in that message. And when we are able to do it right, we are able to play our role in each facet of it. We will have a godly teenager. And a godly teenager in, in there, me, I'm sending to the community a godly teenager. You are sending to the community a godly teenager. Everybody will be better. It will be a better society, a better community, safe for everyone. So the home front, the family units, is where we must get it right. If we want a better future for our youth and our children. If we want a better adult, we must get it right at family units. You can imagine I saw a little child. That child cannot be more than five years. And he put a teacher in his mouth. It was gassy smoke all over. I saw another child. The father gave a full bottle of beer. The child finished one. The father finished one. Oh, ah, sir. Were you giving that bottle by your father? Even if your father gave you, I'm sure. Fathers that raised adults that are of our ages, they would never give you a bottle when you were three or five. You are the one who spoiled this situation. Do you know my fear now? Children that were not, that were not well brought, that were not well break, brought up, Children that were not well brought up are not becoming parents. We are in trouble. Please, let us do our part and keep the health of a teen. The teenage health matters. Hope you have learned something. Hope you have taken home something. I'm going to have another batch of this lecture. And I'm going to be talking about social problems of a teenager. How they want to party, how they want to stay late nights, how they want to be involved in drugs, how they want to womanize, how they want to uh, uh, explore, they want to see the other part of a woman or a man, how they don't want to take instructions, how they want to dress mood, how they want to explore, and all that. I'm going to be talking about the social problems of a teen. And even at the end of it, still talk to the father, the mother, or the guardian of a teenager. In all that, you still have a role to play. When they get it right, they'll be a role model. That is the truth. Did you know that when you go out there, you see people naked? Like I give it to people that are brought up in the northern part of this country. In the northern part of this country, you don't see more of the skin. That is the truth. I was in the northern part of this country for more than 20 years. In the northern part of this country, you see less of the skin. For children that were raised there, as at the time we got to this other part, we were coming close to the south. You know, the teenager I had, my teenage girl, we close up everywhere, even when it is very hot at this part. She doesn't want it seen. Okay, that is to say, environmental influence is important. Upbringing is also important in our nudity these days. You don't need to expose all the skin to be beautiful. Parents of a teenager, start early, and you'll be glad you did. Thank you. Hope you have learned something. I'm always here, Dr. Kate. If you, be, if you prevent these mistakes, you will have a beautiful life. All right, and you too, as a parent, you will enjoy your team. You will enjoy them growing into a young adult with enviable character, with, with good charisma, with polished countenance. You know, you say, This is my boy, that will make you proud. This is my girl, that will make you proud. They do well in school, they are role models. You know, there are people that people want to associate with because they have enviable characters. Would that not make you happy? Please invest in your children. Good input, good output. Whatsoever you sow is what you reap. Have a great day. Bye.